Hello friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuma. In today's video, I wanted to talk about computer hardware that you will find in a business environment. Most of the time, it will be small form factors when it comes to desktops. And for the laptops, we have some particular brands that are very popular. We have HPs, we have Lenovo's, and we have Dell's. From what I've seen in my personal experience, HP is the most prevalent when it comes to laptops and also desktops. But I do see a lot of uh, Dells and uh, Lenovo desktops as well, kind of mixed in. And this is just from personal experience. Generally speaking, when it comes to the desktops themselves, they are small form factors uh, because, you know, they're about this size and in comparison to a full ATX desktop, which is about this big. So, of course, it's easier to handle smaller ones like this. And just real quick, if you can take one second to like the video, I really appreciate it. Every time you guys do that, it's just it's just amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Starting from the older ones, uh, for more example, an HP, you'll see 8,000 or maybe even 6,000 series computers, uh, small form factors. And then you start to move up into the range of 800 G1s, G2s, G3s. And then you have G4s, which are the most recent ones. But most of the time, you will see what you're looking at right now. They're kind of, they're really easy to work on. You just pop them open and you can see different types of things that you can easily replace. They're very intuitive, if you will, to work on. And then you have some Lenovo's, which are these M91s, uh, P, I think this one is. And then you can see how it's kind of similar to that. They're always compact in size and then you have an ability to change things in and out really easily. And for the desktop, when it comes to Dells, it's kind of the same thing. But I'm, what I'm thinking right now is the uh, uh, 9020s or those, those really small ones. The Dell ones were actually a lot smaller. I don't know if I can find the image of that, but if I do, I'll show you. But it's kind of the same deal. You have a tiny desktop that you can work on. And over time, I actually bought these online because you can find these refurbished pretty cheap nowadays. And I bought them over, over time to make videos about them for this type of purpose and also to show people how they can upgrade them because they're a really good deal, especially when they're refurbished. You get them like a really good computer for like a couple of hundred bucks and then you add a couple of things in it to make it a lot faster. When it comes to laptops, you have, uh, I didn't see many Dells, but there were Dells. Honestly, from the one I've seen, they were not that good of a quality. I'm not sure about the newer stuff. The computer or the company I work for, they switched over to a newer, uh, to, to mostly using HPs for that. But for a HPs, I have actually videos on this too. Again, I bought these on my own just so I can show them. They are, for example, 8460p. Those are like the older ones, 8470p. And then later on, you have 840g1s, g2s, and g3s, depending on what kind of package you want. G3 being like the i7 with touchscreen and all that type of stuff. So why am I telling you about this? Well, just in case you start doing help desk or desktop support, you might want to know some of this stuff just to kind of have a basic understanding of what to expect in there. Yes, all computers will have same type of troubleshooting steps, but in, in general, if you are happy, if you happen to be uh, replacing parts, let's say you become a tech, tech support at like on site for some kind of company, you'll have a, an idea on how to do these things, whether it's from changing to, you know, adding more RAM, changing RAM, changing CPU, heat sink or power supply unit. You have all of those. I have all of those things available on my channel if you want to check out my hardware playlist. Yeah, again, there you go. This is what you will expect in a th business type of environment. And the main thing to keep in mind here is that when they're newer, there will be warranty on them. So that way you can just, you know, get a replacement part. It depends on what the situation you're working at. Uh, sometimes you have to call the, you know, support and the vendor support, if you will, and then they will come and replace the part. But a lot of times they will send you the part if you, you know, if you say that you are the, that technician guy there, you know, on site typically, and then you would just replace it yourself. They would send you the part and you send them the old one back. And it's really interesting actually, if you were into hardware type of stuff. Well, there you have it guys. I just want to make a quick video about this because it's important to educate yourself as much as possible before you apply for these type of jobs. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time and take care. Bye-bye.
So a couple of main things that people usually go for when it comes to replacing or upgrading on their computer is the hard drive. So we have easy access to the hard drive and it's really simple to replace. Here's our CD-ROM and it's actually slightly different than replacing these. Let me show you how this mechanism works. So in order to remove this drive, as you can see, there are little tabs that are holding the hard drive in place and I'll show you exactly how that looks like once I remove it. It's very simple. Here is actually a lever. So you have to pull on it, as you can see here, and I'll show you a better angle. If this is not in the proper position that you like, you can actually lift on this, like this, like so. Once you lift this, you can actually have good access to what you see. So if you push on this, you see how it's actually releasing the hard drive there. That way you can properly slide it out. So let me push this back here a little bit so you guys can see, right? So once I'm pulling on this, and if I just slide forward, right? Now I can slide forward, otherwise I wouldn't be able to, you see that? So now I can just slide forward towards myself and then a lift up, right? I can release this because it's no longer holding it. And if I lift up, and always be careful whenever you remove anything, whether it's a hard drive or just any type of PC component. So you lift it up like so, and then here it's self-explanatory, you just unplug these and you replace your hard drive and then you're done with that. And then it's in just reverse order. Always take your time, make sure that your cables are not rubbing against anything before you place them back in. Okay. And then slide it back that way, right? And now you're done with hard drive. So whether you want to put a solid state in there or just add an extra one, we can also do that here. So let's say you want to keep this. Here's space for our solid state drive. We can put another solid state drive in here and uh, it's you have extra connector here. And in order to connect so this is our power, we're just going to need this extra serial connector which actually connects there. So with your new hard drive you'll probably get one of these cables. You just plug it in here. And then once you put your solid state drive in there, you can simply connect it like that, pull everything back down. Um, additionally, let me just move this cable out of the way. Okay. Additionally, if you want to install a third hard drive, you can certainly do so here, right? Here's another space for uh, you know, regular uh, three and a half inch drive like this one here, or you can even attach, uh, you know, solid state if you really wanted to, right? You just have to little bit get creative, but either way, you do have extra power connector, and then of course you can put a solid state drive. The only one, the one thing to keep in mind is that you do only have three SATA connectors, so it could be up to three drives, but that means if you want three hard drives, right? If you want three hard drives, you're going to have to disconnect our CD-ROM. So a lot of people don't need to use the CD-ROM so you can disconnect it and just use that you know use that uh, connector instead of uh, instead of the CD-ROM so if you want to remove the CD-ROM you actually press down on this green tab and it actually lets it loose and I want to press it now because it's going to fall through and it's not going to fall where I want it you're actually supposed to have this all the way down because once we press this the green button here it slides out that way so if I press it the drive comes out like so, right? It's very self explosive and then you push it back. Make sure it clips back in. Right? Okay. Now we're done with that. So now we know how to upgrade our solid state drive. Now, again, a lot of times people don't even know that you can actually do this. Because it's actually pretty tough in there, but there's no button or anything. But obviously you can remove this like so. So now let's have a look at our memory. Here you can actually install up to I believe 64 bit because this CPU is i5 um, uh, 6500 and that's a new architecture that I believe it supports up to 64 gigabytes anyways these are uh, these are the memory slots that you can use you simply put them in like so right you have plenty of space it's dual channel what it appears to be as well and since I'm playing around with this cable here this is our power supply cable so let's have a look how to replace the power supply in case it goes out or you know something like that so you have actually three cables that come from the power supply unit. Actually, I should say three bundles, right? But it's three plugs, one here, one there, and one here. So you would basically unplug those first. Let me see if you get in a good angle of this. Here, what I'll, this is what I'll do here, right quick. All right, give you a little bit another angle there. There's our other connector. And if you want the easier access to that, you can simply remove this air guide once you remove the wire from this part here right 
and they're just clips here, really easy, simple to remove. That way you get a little bit more extra room to work on this, right? And in order to do this, you just press on the little tab here. You see how it actually squeezes in right there. You just squeeze it like so, right? So we got one cable disconnected. Here's our second one for the power supply. So we got P1, P2, and P3, right? This is P1, P2, and P3. Same thing, you really can't mess these up, right? So now that you're done, you just have to release this part that's holding these cables. Okay, we're almost done here. And then in order to actually remove the power supply, there are a few screws back here. And let me show you. There are four screws, or three, I'm sorry, three screws there. Once you do that, you just press this button here, right here, and then you can just take out the power supply. After that, it's very self-explanatory. Okay? So if for some reason you need to replace the heat sink or you want to replace your uh, CPU, you just need a flathead screwdriver like this. I hope it focuses in for you guys. And then you simply use this and then you unscrew it counterclockwise. And this will pop out. This will pop out and then you can remove the, the uh, heat sink. I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to have to replace the thermal paste that's underneath. But it's very simple. You just do that and you unplug your fan which is right there and then you just pull this hole out and that, that's how that works. And if you're interested in this specific PC, there will be a link in the description box below as well. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video, share with friends, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll be glad to help you with any questions that you may have. So do not hesitate to ask me anything. I will certainly help you out. All right guys, have a good one, bye-bye.